Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi there. I thought I'd do a quick lesson on the Deco tool. It's relatively new to Flash, started off in CS4. So let's take a look at it. If I click on it here, we get a whole load of properties in our properties dialog. Starts off generally on vine fill, but let's take a look at building brush. Now this is a good way of illustrating what the deco tool does very well. You can see that we've got drawing effect, it's building brush, and our advanced options are set to random building and building size one. So if I just draw a line with the deco tool, you can see that it's drawing random skyscrapers out of a kind of library of vectors that it has. It's, it's basically got f four preset buildings and it will draw them randomly. So if you're not very good at drawing, um, you can see it's drawing them at random sizes here as well. And you wanted a skyline in the background of your flash document, then this would be a very quick way of doing it. And you can alter the size of the building, etc. there. Let's have a look at some more. As well as drawing pictures, you can also do very simple animations with the Deco tool. If I go to Fire Animation, I just drag across the screen with that. You can see that Flash has created a very simple animation of some fire for us. And if I just delete our original content layer, you can see that it's created a series of keyframes with the fire inside it. So as we dragged across, it actually created a little animation for us, so we can play that through. And it's a really quick way of getting a nice sort of fiery effect. And you can see in the options, we've got choice over how fast the fire is, how big it is, how long the actual flames last. You can see at the moment it's set to 50 frames. And it's created 50 frames there. Uh, the colour of the flame, so you can change it to green if you wanted, green and purple, <laughs> uh, how many sparks there are. Next up, let's take a look at the flower brush. If I draw around with that, you can see that we can create sort of a stroke made of flowers. You can change the flowers from uh, garden flowers to roses. And this would be good if you were wanting to create a floral border for your flash project. You can select branch to include a branch with your flowers. This tool is very similar to another tool called the tree brush, which we can check out now. Tree brush at the bottom. This is a way of drawing trees, very simply. And uh, the trees will follow the stroke that you draw. And you can change what sort of tree it is. At the moment it's on aspen tree, but I can change it to garden plant. You can see that looks a bit more like the roses we were drawing just now, or a redbud tree, or a Christmas tree. So if you're doing a Christmas themed uh, flash file, that would be useful. And you can change the color of the flowers and the fruits and the leaf and the tree scale. Next up, let's check out the lightning brush. Now, this really needs a dark background to work properly. A dark blue. Click on my deco tool, my lightning brush. You can draw out some lightning. It's a pretty cool effect if you're wanting some lightning. Lightning's not the easiest thing to draw in the world. As well as drawing lightning, the deco tool can animate it as well. If you check this box. so. If I draw it like that, you can see up here it's created some keyframes for us. Now lightning's quite quick, so that's why there's only a few keyframes. So if we play that through, there we go. That's our lightning. And in the deco tool options, you can change the beam width and complexity. You can change the color of the lightning. So if you want it to be red, you could have red lightning. And you can see that when it draws it, it separates it all into group objects which you can edit to your heart's content. This might also be good for drawing veins. 
Next up, let's take a look at the smoke animation. This is similar to the fire animation. And with the smoke animation, uh, you draw the path that the smoke goes along. And Flash will create a number of keyframes with that smoke appearing and disappearing along that line. And you've got various options for your smoke, the size, the speed, the duration of the animation, at the moment it's 50 frames whether you want an end animation, so does it actually completely disappear by the end of the animation. So if I draw that now with end animation ticked, you can see that all of my smoke will have disappeared by the end of the animation. There we go, and you see it's created a lot more frames to facilitate that. And you can also edit the smoke color and the background color. Next up, let's check out particle system. Now this uses symbols and kind of spits them out. So at the moment, I've got particle one and particles who set the default shape, which is just a little square. So if I just click on the screen, it will create a particle system. And it's just spitting out little squares. And uh, you can see it's created a number of keyframes of these symbols being spat out in a particle system. Particle systems you might be familiar with if you've done a 3D animation there, but what if I didn't want it to be spitting out squares? What if I wanted it to spit out something different? Go to our deco tool and I'm going to click instead of default shape, I'm going to edit. I'm going to use one of the symbols I've got in my flash project already. I'm going to use this snap shape that I've got. And uh, for my second particle, I'm going to use one of my arrows. So if I click now, it should spit out those two shapes. Let's have a look. There we go. So that's quite bizarre. <laughs> it's spitting out my snap shape and my arrow shape. They're quite big at the moment, but if we play that through, that's a way of spitting out symbols. A lot of these effects are new to CS5. In CS4 there's only vine fill and grid fill, which aren't the most useful brushes in the world. Another one that I can show you is the symmetry brush. So this is just a way of drawing symmetrically. At the moment it's defaulting to this little square symbol, but you could use your own symbols as I have with the others. I could use my snap shape see that I can arrange any symbol I like in a symmetrical pattern and at the moment it's flipping it around in a sort of kaleidoscopic way and you can change it from rotating around a central point to reflecting across or a grid translation and you can edit it by clicking on the symbols there you can edit the center point. Let's take a look at the decorated brush next. What this does is it gives you options. It starts off on step wave, but there's lots of different strokes that you can draw, including musical notes. So let's just try drawing with that. You can see that it follows your stroke and draws a pattern along it. You can change the pattern color and the pattern size quite easily. If I try uh, musical notes, you can see it's drawing those along a line. Circles, rope. This would be good for drawing borders. So if you wanted an interesting border around your animation that looked like rope, you could draw it like that. Shiny stars, etc. Two waves. So it's just a way of drawing a pattern along a line in Flash. So that's the Deco tool. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity book on my website, hexjibber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike, and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com, and WH Smiths. Cheers.